Hi, my name is Dr Paul Roach. I'm the Head of Astronomy at the University of Glamorgan in the School of Health, Sport and Science. Uh, my research usually is into weighing things like black holes, neutron stars and, and very massive stars. Um, but today I'm going to be talking about a different kind of star, the, the star that's in the Bible stories of the Nativity, what we call the Christmas star or the star of Bethlehem. Um, there's a bit of a problem with this in that the, the star and the idea of Magi only really appears in the Gospel of Matthew, which is the last of the Gospels written. And it doesn't appear in any of the others. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the four Gospels of the New Testament, but only Matthew refers to Magi and to a star. Now, there's a significant problem with this as well, because the dates of the birth of Jesus don't really match up with events that we know happened in history. For example, the Magi meant to have visited Herod, who was the king at the time. Now, he died in 4 BC, and that's very well recorded. And the Bible story also mentions the fact that Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem as part of a census. And the census occurred in the governorship of the Roman Senate of Quirinus. And that occurred in about 6 or 7 AD. So there's a 10-year period through which Jesus was apparently born and the Magi visited from the east to follow the star that we all hear about in the story. So there's a bit of a problem. The dates don't match. And the story only occurs in one of the Gospels. Now, you'd think something as significant as an event like this, the Nativity story, the Magi visiting from the East, would have occurred in all of the, the, the Gospel stories, but it is only in Matthew. That hasn't stopped astronomers over the years trying to come up with ideas as to what this might have been, what this supposed star, this event that brought these astrologers, as we think they were, over from the East. Now, various astronomical phenomena have been sort of... Um, put together to try and understand what might have been seen in the sky that was considered to be significant enough by these wise men, these astrologers, to, to, worthy, uh, to justify them travelling from the east to um, this, this little province in, in, in the Middle East. There was a lunar eclipse in 4 BC, which is probably one of the, the most significant events around the sort of time period we're looking at in this, this ten-year period where Jesus might have been born. Uh, a little bit before that, but a very significant event, would have been a, an appearance of Halley's Comet, the well-known comet that occurred in about 11 BC. Um, so that would have been a, a, another possibility, but it's a little bit too early. It occurs well before we think Jesus was possibly born. Um, there was a supernova, an exploding star that was seen in about 4 BC by Korean and Chinese astronomers. So again, that might have been an interesting object, a very bright new object in the sky that was around for probably several weeks or months at a time. Now, the Bible story talks about this object, this star, standing over the city of Bethlehem. And that's usually a phrase that's associated with comets, so the Halley's Comet interpretation may be true. But probably the most significant events for the astrologers at the time would have been what we call planetary conjunctions. Now, a conjunction is when several planets come together in the sky at the same sort of time, fairly close together. The, the planets are obviously physically very, very far apart, but actually in the sky they appear to be quite close together. And in particular, conjunctions that involve the planet Jupiter, which is considered to be the king of the planets, would have been of great significance to astrologers at the time. And around 7 BC, there were a number of conjunctions that took place um, visible in the sky from this, this uh, location. And in particular, there was a conjunction between the planet Jupiter and the star Regulus, which is a very big, uh, bright star and, and considered to be quite important in astrological terms, in about 2 to 3 BC. So that date fits quite nicely. So the conjunction of Jupiter and Regulus is, is a strong candidate for a significant astrological event, at least, that might have signified something of importance that was happening. But the basic problem is... The star only appears, the major only appear in the Gospel of Matthew. That was written probably about 66 AD, so it's the last of the four New Testament Gospels written. It seems to reflect stories that were happening at the time about kings from the east who were visiting Rome to talk to the new emperor um, to try and have their claim for kingship justified. And many of the phrases that occur in Matthew also seem to occur in the historical records of the visit of these so-called magi to the, the, the emperor of Rome. So it may well be that the, the whole idea of a star of Bethlehem was just a, a story that was added in order to justify the, the, the kingship of Jesus over the, over the Israelis, uh, the Jews at the time. Um, so unfortunately there probably isn't a real Star of David. There wasn't any real such event. But it hasn't stopped astronomers trying to put together all sorts of fanciful uh, explanations as to what might have happened.